Hi, and thanks so much for joining me for my 2019 beauty favorites. This is probably my favorite video of the year because I think back on all the products I've used this year, whether they are new to me this year or things I've used in the past, and really what have I enjoyed using the most, what performs consistently, and gives a really beautiful result. I know we did a top shelf video recently, but these are the pick of the pick of the top shelf items. So we're just going to start from beginning to end how we would apply things. I tried to pick one item per category. So I used all of these products, if not all of them, I used most of them getting ready today and I just enjoyed every single step of the way and I'm excited to share them with you. This is probably not a surprise, the primer that is my favorite this year is the Tatcha Silk Canvas. It glides on really beautifully. The pores and any fine lines that I have are blurred. It also provides a really nice base to apply foundations. Not only does this primer help my foundation apply really beautifully and my skin looks really flawless with this, it holds from beginning to end. So I applied this probably a couple hours ago. It will look like this until I take it off many hours down the road. So the life of my makeup is extended quite a bit with this product as well. So if you've not tried this, then I would give it a try because I've had this for a while now. Um, I would recommend using the smaller size though. I believe there's like a travel size. I'd start with that first especially if you don't use primer all the time because it only lasts, I think, for six months. Moving on to foundation. So I haven't used this in a while and I thought, why haven't I used it? Because it, it's really the most beautiful foundation in terms of the way it feels, the way it applies, and the way that it looks. So it's a very luxurious kind of texture. It's very silky smooth. So I know that there are other foundations out there that claim to be silky, but I think this is the silkiest one. So I would just recommend that you go and try because the texture isn't unlike any other foundation that I have. This foundation is so great that when I apply it with my hands, I don't get streaks or any visible marks as I'm applying it. So I actually did apply it with my fingers today. And what I love the most about it is that it matches my skin almost perfectly. I noticed most of my foundations that I list below tend to feel a little bit warm. This one, however, sits right in the middle. Sometimes with the cooler colors, they are too pink. I'm not as warm as I used to be. My skin tone somehow is becoming more cool over time. So this one, just when I put on my skin, it is like second skin in terms of color and in terms of quality. Now this does have SPF 24 in it. I wouldn't rely on this for my sunscreen, but it is nice for me because I pretty much shield myself from the sun all the time. So it's just another layer, but it feels like nothing on my skin. It feels like I just moisturized. So I don't like the feeling of foundation. That's why I don't wear it every day. I don't like that I can tell I put some something on my skin that it feels either heavy or um, you see sometimes like makeup falling apart. This doesn't do that. It just perfects my skin. I just feel like this is so different than any other foundation I have. I have really good foundations, but this is in a class of its own. So again, with this one, please go try a sample out first because the color match is a little bit tricky. Their, I feel like their range, they expanded it this year, which was nice. So they have a couple of deeper colors than they had before, but it seems like there are many holes in between their range. So definitely go and sample it first because it's quite an investment, but it is the most beautiful foundation I've tried. I do love the foundation, but this is more um, universal in terms of the time of year you can wear it. The foundation is much more emollient and I think is really great for the winter, but this one is great all year round. So I have that on now and I just, I love this so much. I cannot recommend this one highly enough. So in addition to this Clay de Peau product, my favorite concealer, no surprise, is the Clay de Peau in Mocha. Now this has SPF 25 in it, which again, for people who are avoiding the sun, it's a good thing. What I love about Mocha is I was using Honey for a while. It's pulling really, again, warm on me. So this works pretty seamlessly with O40. So if you are my shade and you are looking for a foundation and a concealer that work really well together, I would go with these. What I love about this concealer the most is that once it's warmed up, so I use it on my um, hand, I just put a little bit here, I warm it up and then I'll dab it on, which is how I applied it today. It's much more uh, pliable 
because if you go straight onto your face, it deposits quite a bit and then it takes a little bit of work to um, kind of get it to the consistency you want it. Unless you need a really heavy layer of it, I would definitely warm it up here first. I tapped it under my eyes, um, but for my dark areas, I could go in straight just because I do need that much coverage, although I still am patting it on because what I'm mixing it with is the Charlotte Tilbury color corrector. So this is my favorite color corrector of the year. It came out this year. It's in two medium. So foundation first, and then I apply this in targeted areas, like under my eyes, on my darker areas. Then I'll go in with the concealer, and then I will go in again with this and kind of sandwich the concealer between this because it gives me a chance to customize my concealer a little bit because if I didn't need color correcting, I would just work with that concealer, it would be fine, but I do need color correcting, so I will work this in. And these three products get me to the most beautiful skin-like quality I can get to without too much makeup. And so I think that's the key. I don't, I don't like putting a lot of makeup on my face. In fact, if I can go without foundation, I go without foundation. But these allow me to put the least amount of products on my face and get a really beautiful, natural finish. Moving on to powders. So this again, probably will be no surprise. The Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish into medium is what I set everything with. I will set under my eyes. I will set these areas. It's got great coverage to it as well. So if you are someone who does not like foundation, but you just want to mattify a little bit and also just even out the skin tone slightly, this would work really well if you just had moisturizer and then you went over this with say a buffing brush. I think that'd be really beautiful on your skin. If I could do that, I could do that with most of my skin actually right here. Um, that would work really, really well. So if I didn't have to conceal, I would moisturize and just follow up with this. This is not a new mention, but it's probably been in my favorites for the last few years. It's the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder in Radiant Light. What this does is it applies almost like a filter-like finish to the skin. It refracts the light really nicely so that any other imperfections that didn't get taken care of with a foundation, concealer, or powder will get taken care of with this. So it also has a slight peachiness to it. Because my skin is going towards the more cool side now, what this does is it brightens and it kind of brings life back to my skin. So a great filter type product. This is new to me this year, not a new product. So I go through the kind of the perfecting part with the first powder and the mattifying and then the filter with the hourglass. And then this is like a special lighting kind of product. So this is the Guerlain Meteorites and I did a dedicated video on the medium, medium shade? No, it was the deep shade that I did in the darker one. Um, and then as I got lighter, I knew I'd probably have to try the medium. So then I got the medium one and I asked you if it's a thing to customize these because each of the meteorites have different combinations of different spheres in them, of different spheres in them. And so I combined them. I took some of the lavender ones out and I added some of the deeper like mocha type colors in there and um, some of these more yellowy ones in there like the light yellow ones, I can't speak today, the light yellow ones um, and then some of the light pink ones in there. So I was able to take out the colors that I thought were um, not as harmonious with my skin tone right now. So I've been really enjoying using that in the center of my face. So this is again, kind of a, a light for the middle of my face. And then I've been going in with this one. It's the recent one I added from the holiday collection. It is in Golden Land. And if you are deeper in skin tone, this one's for you because it has these beautiful copper tones in there, as well as these beautiful burgundy tones in there. So I've been using this, oh, and I love this too, this more goldeny yellow tone. And I'm using this on the exterior of my face. So I get a little bit of um, glow from the exterior, but it's a little bit deeper. So it's very much a focused kind of ethereal quality. So that's what I get from the Guerlain that I don't get from the Hourglass, if you're wondering the difference. There's more of an ethereal glow with the Guerlain versus 
the hourglass, which is more like a filter. So I hope that helps you if you're wondering. So I do enjoy finishing off with these two products. I do use these mostly in the evening. Um, during the day when I wear it, I can see it in the mirror and I can also tell when other people are using this product during the day because it just has a very unique reflective quality when it comes to the way the light plays off of it that you know that that's Guerlain and can be nothing else. So um, I do reserve this for for the evening, but it's kind of fun um, on video as well. So I have it on right now. So I'm so glad I tried these out this year finally. So on to bronzer. If you love warm bronzers like the Guerlain bronzers, those are on the warm side. This is even warmer. It's from the Charlotte Tilbury palette, the Gorgeous Glowing Beauty. I love this for the bronzer. And as you can see, I've used that more out of anything else. And I like it because it's so easy to use. It's a little bit soft. Like some of the bronzers I've used are a little bit difficult to get the um, product off. It's a little bit densely packed. This one is nice and soft, but it doesn't deposit too much at a time. So it's a really easy product to use in terms of getting the color on without being too much. Sometimes bronzers take quite some time to build up or they deposit too much at a time. So this one's like the perfect consistency on getting that bronzer on. And I don't use as much bronzer as I used to. I love bronzer. Um, it's probably one thing or two things between that and blush that I go overboard on when I use it because I think it's so fun. Um, but I used it today just really, really slightly, um, but it is a beautiful shade. On to highlighter. Now, this is not necessarily a luxury brand. It might be somewhere in between, but this was gifted to me by Persona Cosmetics. It is their Cali Glow Highlighter in Zuma. So this is actually better than some of the higher end highlighters that I've found. It is so, fine in terms of the particles of shimmer in there. I have it on right now. It reminds me a lot of the Charlotte Tilbury highlighter, the liquid one that's in the little container with a sponge. It reminds me a lot of that, but it's powder. So sometimes with powders, especially if you have fine lines and you're a little bit more mature, this can be difficult right here because it'll bring that out. This doesn't do that. So that is why it, above all of the other powder foundations, powder foundations. So that's why above all the powder highlighters, this one is my favorite. So if you haven't tried it yet, I would go try it. But yeah, I think it, again, it's a best seller of theirs. So I'm not surprised. Moving on to powder foundations. Now powder foundations are something I kind of gave up on. It made my skin look worse with it on than if I didn't have makeup. So it was like better with no makeup versus putting this on because it just sat on my skin and it brought out everything like fine lines, or things like that. But I use the Color Science Even Up product. If you haven't been here, it's an SPF 50. It corrects, protects, and brightens skin. So it's not the right shade for me though. If you are lighter, it's a very actually narrow kind of um, skin tone that will work with that because I know it's darker on some people, but it is a really nice um, SPF. So I use that and then I wanted to bring my skin back to its natural color. So I went for their uh, natural finish pressed foundation and this one is in medium sand so when I apply this over that sunscreen I don't even need concealer it's not perfect but I don't need concealer like I do with other foundations so what I did let's see we were going on a flight it was like 4 a.m. I always wear sunscreen on the plane because you still have windows in the plane and the Sun is going to you know touch your face so I need to protect it from the sun so I put that on I put this on and then I just put a little bit of eyebrows on and about eight hours later after a couple flights my husband said your makeup looks really nice it looks like um, like your skin but just evened out and I thought wow that's really impressive because I didn't take that much time and that means that this powder foundation, I noticed it myself too, looks very skin like it melds really well with the skin, which doesn't sound like something a powder foundation does, um, but this does it. It actually looks more skin like than some of my liquid foundations. So, as a foundation, really nice foundation, but as a powder foundation, very impressive. So, if you were interested, I would give this a try. It also has SPF 20 in it. So it's been a lifesaver when it comes to getting ready quickly and just kind of evening out the skin tone while having on SPF. 
Moving on to eyebrows, so this is going to be fast because you already know what it is. It is the Wonder Brow in black brown. I use that to shape my eyebrows. Then I go in with the Dior Pumpin' Brow. This is the best brow gel I've ever tried. It's in 002, holds those hairs that are unruly. Mine like to go whichever way they want to go. They, yeah, they kind of have a mind of their own. So this holds without being like crunchy. Um, so I really love that. And the color, again, is amazing for my my hair, my skin tone and my hair. I prefer a cooler color when it comes to my eyebrows. So that has a nice cool tone, more of a taupey tone. Then I've got to the Dior Show Brow Styler in 002. I go in and refine everything and do all that detail work with this. This is a beautiful pencil with a great spoolie on the end too. So if I go in too heavy, I use that to break things up and kind of perfect. Just one other thing about this Wonder Brow I forgot to mention is that it stays in place. So I have some bare areas on my eyebrows and this lays down really nicely and stays all day. So if I went like this during hot weather, it would not wipe my eyebrows off, which most other products, it does that. So if you're looking for a product that stays, then try this. And it's again, a nice cool tone. Then we've got eyeshadow. So this one is my favorite because it is a perfect one shade color as well as a perfect crease color. So this is a Tweed palette and this shade Caramel, I don't really use these other ones, but I use this one quite a bit when I travel. This is the only thing I've been taking with me. I just take a brush and I add it to the crease and below an eyeliner or mascara and I'm done. So I can't say enough about this shade. It's done so many things to help just transition colors for me. And it just deposits really nicely, it's easy to blend. And I've never found a crease color that I relied on as much as this one. So I think that is just such a beautiful color. So again, formula and shade on that are amazing. So then to eye pencils, I consider this a different category than eyeshadow, it's powder. My favorite one has been by Sizzly this year. It is the Phyto Eye Twist in number 11, it's a nice, you know, bronzy color, we're not surprised about that. It has a bit of a red tone to it, but it's just so smooth going on. Doesn't crease, stays in place once it sets. I think eye crayons are one of the most easy, user-friendly kinds of tools out there. So I'll be investing more in those this year. I don't think I've um, really explored them as much as I have in the past. So they, that is a really gorgeous eye pencil. Another eye product, okay, so then I consider this different because it's a cream, <laughs> is the Clay de Peau in 309. They, this is called the, let me read it, Cream Eye Color Solo. And that is in a beautiful brownish, goldenish color. So there's a bit of difference between this one and the Sizzly. I'll swatch them side by side so you can see the difference. But both of these are my go-tos, really beautiful on brown eyes, so can't recommend those highly enough. As for eyeliners, I went with Victoria Beckham again because these are interesting in the fact that they are soft and when you apply them, they're easy to smudge, which is why they have this uh, tool on the other side, this smudger. So you apply it, you smudge it, but then once you're done with that, it sets. So I know that you can either have like softer pencils that you can manipulate, but they don't set, or you have eye pencils that set, but they're not easy to manipulate. So these do both, and I still need to get the black one, but I love the colors that I have, which are um, Bordeaux, which is a like burgundy type color, and I have it on my upper um, lid, upper lash line right now. And I also have the shade Bronze, which I wasn't quite sure about because of the green like tinge on it, but it's really beautiful and I have it on my inner uh, waterline today and I have been using it pretty much daily because it adds a little bit of shimmer but it's not so reflective that it's a little bit distracting. So I've been using bronze with this color right here and I actually put it on my uh, on the bottom and on the top. So this one's a great one to smudge out as well. It just adds a little bit again of um, sparkled to the eyes. I've been loving blush again. It's, I have a like, I'm on and off with blush, but I'm on with blush again. And I've been using this as a, also a way to camouflage darker spots. So I've been taking this and it's the Charlotte Tilbury cheek to chic to chic, chic, hello, <laughs> cheek to chic. And I take this 
And I put it right here in the center, which seems like counterintuitive, but I've been trying to extend my blush all the way so it's more continuous. And then I take this lighter color and I kind of swirl them together. I had a question from someone asking, should they purchase this palette or a face palette versus a cheek to chic and the um, bronze and glow. And I said, well, if you can find a bronze and glow that works for you, either the lighter one or the deeper one, and a blush that is definitely a better combination than say this, these have kinds of hits and misses in terms of the shades that are in there. Like I don't love this blush in here. So if you can find shades that you love, um, like the bronze and glow works really well for me when I'm tan, but the lighter one doesn't work for me now. So I would definitely go with this for a bronzer highlighter, um, but I still love this as a cheek color. So if you can find a combination that works for you, then I would go with the, again, bronze and glow and a cheek color. Um, but if not, then this is still a nice combination. Moving on to, oh, I only have a couple things left. Um, really quickly though, this is my favorite tinted moisturizer. It is in Bare Radiance. It is the Laura Mercier Tinted Moisturizer Illuminating. So this one has only a handful of shades to pick from. So this is a second to lightest. So if you are any lighter than me, then this might be a little bit tricky for you to find a shade. So again, get a tester first before you, um, before you get one. But I feel like the way I can describe this best is it's liquid hourglass. So it reminds me of the effect that the ambient lighting powder has on my skin as a filter. This also provides a filter, but in a liquid form. Plus again, it has a little bit of peach you can see in there. So I get some color correcting and brightening with it as well. And it has SPF 30. So moving on to a lip colors, let's start with lip liner. I feel like this one is the one I've been looking for forever. And it's by Patrick Ta. It is the shade She's Humble. I've always looked for a lip liner that has enough a peach tone to cancel out the darker shades on the exterior of my lips and then not influence the lipstick so much because I know many of you have mentioned try concealer, but with concealer, I think it gets kind of a little bit muddy on me. It can influence the color too much and get kind of mixed in with the color. So this one neutralizes that area, but doesn't impact the color too much in terms of the lipstick. So I love this one. If you are my coloring and have struggled to find a lip liner, sometimes they are too gray. Sometimes they are too pink. Um, I just have had so much trouble finding a lip liner, but that one is perfect. And then thinking about a lip stick. So, you know, I love 103 Legend. I use that for special type occasions. And then I thought the new one I got from Lisa Eldridge and Muse is also beautiful, really easy to wear. But I thought of one shade that I can wear both day and evening and always looks good and doesn't take too much effort to wear and feels really comfortable on the lips. And it is this one by Charlotte Tilbury. It is Glowing Gen and I have it on right now. So that's what I think is kind of, again, when you look at my skin tone, here it is. It looks like a nice rosy color, but then on my lips, I don't think that it looks like that. I feel like it looks much peachier. I mean, it might have to do a little bit with the lip gloss that I put on top, but pretty much it looks like this when I applied it. So I love this lip color. It adds just enough color and life to my face without overwhelming it. It looks good every time. It doesn't matter what I'm wearing. I mean, it helps that I'm wearing a color that is kind of related to it, but it doesn't matter what I'm wearing. The color always looks beautiful. So, that's why I picked this one. So if you haven't tried it, I don't love the packaging because I'm not a animal print person. Um, so that's the only thing that I, is the downside of this, but it's, I think it's subtle enough and tasteful enough that it's okay. But um, yeah, but the color itself is gorgeous. Then this is a late edition. I actually purchased this this month, but I was so impressed with it that I thought it, it is my favorite of the year um, because I haven't tried another lip gloss like it. I love the shade. I love how it feels. I love that it's got enough color to it that it just looks like a your lips but better. Great no makeup makeup shade. This is by Tom Ford. And I think you may have recommended it to me. It is the 
uh, Gloss Luke's in 06 Ravish. So I noticed this has been sold out a couple times when I tried to look for it online, but I went to a counter and they had it. I tried it. It is just beautiful, but you can see there's kind of like a, you can see a trend here. There was always like a little bit of peach, a little bit of warmth, but this is a beautiful, beautiful lip gloss. And then this is the kind of packaging I like that if you take it out, it just looks so beautiful and sleek and tasteful. So love this one. I would highly, highly recommend this one. That is it for my beauty favorites. I would love to know what your beauty favorites are for 2019, what I should be trying. I'm trying also to figure out what to focus on next year. Um, I always try a lot of foundations, but I feel like, I mean, I love this one, so I don't really feel the need to try too many more out, especially because I don't wear foundation every day, but love this one, if I didn't mention that already. Um, I think eye crayons though are something I will be investing in. I did not try as many this year as I have in the past, and I actually have two videos on the eye crayons I've tried, um, so I would love to focus more on those this year. And of course, anything that has new technology, I will be trying, that's kind of what I get most excited about. Um, but yeah, if there are other things you want me to focus on, please let me know so I know to keep my eye out for those things and those are things you wanna see or specific brands. I know which ones I love and I think you see a trend here, Clay de Poe, Charlotte Tilbury, who else do I have here? Hourglass, those are like ones that I go to often. But if there's another brand I should be looking at, please let me know what that is. And I think that's it. And I think I don't see you again until the new year. So if I don't see you again, I might throw another video in here if I can, but if I don't see you, happy new year to you. I hope that 2020 brings amazing things for you. I hope it brings amazing things for your family and loved ones and a whole new decade is ahead of us. So I honestly don't make any five-year plans or anything like that. I kind of take things day by day and just trying to enjoy the moments. So whatever the future has in store for you, I hope that they are wonderful and I will see you in the new year. So happy new year. And if you enjoyed this video, if you learned something, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.